So, you've installed your Pterodactyl panel and wings, and you probably want to make a server now. So, how to do that is, you go to your admin panel by clicking this one, then go to servers, and if you've obviously set up the node and your location, then click on create new, and I'll guide you through what all of this means. So, we have the server name, so obviously give it some name, I'll just call it test server. Uh, put the owner of the server in. We currently only have one user, so it will just be myself. Then put in the allocation. You create allocations within the node by clicking into your node, uh, going into allocation, put in your IP address, and then obviously the port you want to open up. So this, was open, this would open up port 555. I'm not going to do that now because I already have the ports open. So I'm going to give it the port 25565, which is the default Minecraft port. Uh, this just means that when people connect to your server, direct connect, they don't need to put in the port. If I would give it port 3000, I would have to go in and say colon and then give it 3000. Uh, so yeah, in 25565, it's not necessary. So I'll give it 25565 and I don't need to give it another port. I, if I want two ports for, for example, a proximity voice chat or some other program that needs external access, you can go and do that now or you can do that later. So, uh, database limit is how many databases it's allowed to have. I, I just select zero. How many backups? Um, so, I'll just, you know, if you have five, you can have five backups and then the if you create a sixth backup, the last well, the first backup you created gets overwritten with the new one. So yeah, I'll just do, yeah, also zero since we don't need any backups. And uh, just ignore location limits. Zero is fine. Um, so, uh, so the CPU limit. Zero percent means that it's allowed to utilize as much as possible. So uh, usually this is only around four cores if you're using paper. If you're using normal vanilla, it is literally just one, maybe two, I'm not fully sure about that one. Um, but how it works is that if you have two servers that are both set to zero, and both of them pull full performance, which would mean all your cores, but your server doesn't have enough performance, they'll just share as much performance as they, you know, will get, and that that's just it, nothing bad happens. It'll, it'll just be a bit slower for both of them. So if, you're, if you have this one at zero and you have another one at 200 and let's say you only have 300 percent total which would be three cores uh, then whenever your zero server uses performance it will obviously be able to use all that 300 percent but the other one would only max out at 200 percent but if both of them pull at the same time they'll share some in the middle which would be 150 I, I don't quite know what it actually would do but it does share the percentage fair about how much CPU is being used. Anyways, we'll just use zero because that's fine usually for CPU. Memory is the dangerous one. If you over allocate your node, as I'm about to do by creating the server, and all your servers are running, which mine aren't, because yeah, I have this one offline, which is two gigabytes, which is what we're going to give this one in a second. Um, it, it's bad if you put this one to zero. Because if your server then ever goes over what you currently have available in your node, which you see here, and if you put your node to whatever your server currently has as available RAM, then the entire Linux machine will die unless you enable OOM killer. And why the entire Linux machine dies, I don't actually know. I think it has something to do with that... Um, there isn't enough RAM left for wings and the panels to run, so usually you would probably set this a bit lower so that that failsafe is in, um, but everybody just doesn't. Anyways, so if you have, for example, two servers that both are, you ha are on 10 gigabytes, and both of them are going to use all their server performance, they won't share or anything, they'll just... If, if one of them can't get the RAM that it needs, it just shuts down if this one is enabled. 
or it crashes your entire panel. So you gotta restart the Linux distribution through your uh, VPS manager. Anyways, I'll limit this to two gigabytes. And disk space is self-explanatory, don't go over it, whatever you have on your node, which would be here. And I would also not even over allocate this, just you know for security reasons. Um, but this one you can over allocate, which I'm gonna do in a second, if you know that you're gonna have some inactive servers. For me it's this one and this one. So you want to select your Minecraft egg, which just means which version of, version of Minecraft do you want to run. Do you want to run Paper, which is a optimized version of normal Minecraft, but does ruin some sort some vanilla mechanics like duplic uh, duplicating. Or you can run Purple, which is the exact same as Paper, but it unlocks you to enable duping and all those other basic vanilla things again, and customize a bunch of other things. For this tutorial, we'll just be using Paper, and uh, yeah, after you've done that, select Java 17 if you want to run a uh, the newest Minecraft, or I think it's since 1.17 it needs Java 17, or 1.18, doesn't matter. And you can here select your own, uh, your version. So if you want to run an, on an older version, just select 1. Right, so 1.17, and it will generate a 1.17 server. I usually just always do latest, since I, yeah, I like playing on the newest version. Uh, here you can select whatever your Java file is going to be called. And this has something to do with if we go to this website. I'll leave this in the description below. If you want as much performance out of your server as possible, you select here what your server just called. I'll just say paper here, running pterodactyl, yes, and set the gigabytes of RAM that we have, which in our case would be two gigabytes of RAM. Then you copy this command, go back to pterodactyl, and instead of this command, we'll replace it with whatever we just generated. And here you can see it will use paper.jar. So we can just go in here and say, sure, the server jar name is paper.jar. Or we can do the other way around and replace every reference to paper.jar with server.jar. And that will also do the same. These are just, this is just our Kias flags, which is, you know, good flags to optimize your Minecraft so it doesn't crash as often and just for me in my experience gives more performance so we then go create server you could also do it without these flags but i prefer doing it with them so create server did i click yes here you can see the server is installing now which means it's getting the paper uh, thing as you can see here it's downloading paper and uh, setting up some basic things. After a while, you will have to accept an EULA. So this is the EULA. You make sure to click accept on this one, and then the server will continue. It might give a crash right now because the EULA is not on and I was a bit slow clicking, but it doesn't look like it. So while this is starting, we're gonna launch our Minecraft and copy this IP address. Go to add server or direct connect, type in your IP, and wait for the server to say uh, server marked as running or something like that. You can see it's generating the spawn area and already done. That was pretty fast. It is still running some background processes, as you can see by the CPU uh, usage, but that's usually fine. So server marked as running. You can now go in and join server. And I didn't need to put in the port again because I took the 25565 port. Let's give it a second to load on. We joined a bit early. There. As you can see, we now have a working Minecraft server where you can join, play, whatever. If you want up on your server or moderator, you can just do up and then your username. That was spelled wrong. There. Now my Diego can operator. And I can now do game mode creative. And we now have a server running. Obviously, if you want to turn off the server, click stop. If you want to start, restart the server, click restart. And if it's off and you want to turn it on, click start. We have a file manager here where we can access our server files, which would be uh, here our server jar, which is the paper jar, or go into our plugins and drag in a plugin or whatever we're going to do. 
databases, schedules, which is a nice thing. In schedules, you can create a schedule. Let's call it restart. Uh, put in on when it's going to run. Uh, let's just say it's going to run on minute zero every four hours and all, only one server is online and only when the schedule is enabled. So this will run every day of the week, every month and every day of the month, which I, yeah, it's just if you want it on a weekly day or whatever. And now every fourth hour on minute zero, which would be a, a whatever, it will run a specific sequence of commands. So the sequences of commands is you click in and create a new task. And let's, for example, say uh, create a backup. And then you can see that every four hours, a backup would be created. So yeah, whatever. Ah, see, see the backup limit is zero. So let's, instead of a backup, create a send a command. And let's just say, uh, say, say, ah. So every four hours, your server will say, ah, or run a backup or restart, depending on what you want to do. You can obviously set it to day of the month instead, or every month or every week, if you want something like a restart or reboot happen. And if we click on run now, you can see that server wrote ah, ah and then it will start counting down from now uh, here we have our users if you want to add a admin to admin like a, a user to admin this or have access to this you can obviously do that and it has a bunch of configurations here are your backups for me it's but no because i don't have any uh, just some network information some startup information you can also do the same command later on if you already have a server and change the Java version if you forgot to do something or forgot to do this in the installation. Some settings, your uh, file transfer thing, your login, whatever. And if you want to reinstall the server, you can reinstall the server or rename it. And that was it. We now have a server running and yeah.